Hi everyone, Fox is here and welcome to the part 2 of my September book haul. I decided to split this video in two parts because my first part was mostly YA and a bit of adult books, fantasy and magical realism. And for this part I will just have everything else. It will have manga, graphic novels and some other stuff. So let's just get started. <laughs> First, I have manga, and this is volumes 1, 2, and 4 of The Requiem of the Rose King by Aya Kano. I read volume number 1 in August, I believe, and absolutely loved it. This is a sort of retelling of Henry VI and Richard III by Shakespeare, with some magical realism and um, fantasy elements to it. I really liked it. I liked it to the point that I decided to purchase uh, all volumes that were available on Indigo. And I cannot wait to read them because it was so much fun. It was just so beautiful and whimsical and a bit weird, which is quite common for manga. <laughs> but I really liked all of the elements to volume number one. So hopefully other volumes will not disappoint me. Then I have these two books here, which are a bit difficult to classify because these are the collection of episodes, basically scripts for a very famous podcast called the Welcome to Night Vale. And these books are volume number one, which is called Mostly Void, Partially Stars, and volume number two, The Great Glowing Coils of the Universe. Both of them are by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner, who are creators of the podcast. It is a fictional... Uh, a podcast about a fictional city um, somewhere in, in America and there is a lot of weird and um, mysterious and also absolutely crazy fantastical stuff which is happening in that city. I love this podcast. I'm a bit behind, quite a bit actually, but I listen to it whenever I can and I absolutely love it. I also listen to the audiobook which was um, as a matter of fact, it was the novel. It was called um, The Night Vale, the novel. And I, I have it as a hardback, but I listened to it as an audiobook, as a matter of fact, and I really liked it. These are actually first signed editions, so they're signed both by uh, Joseph and Jeffrey, and it's super exciting. I really wanted to get a copy um, of my Welcome to Night Vale novel signed by them, but unfortunately they were in Toronto last November and um, on that day I was really sick so I couldn't go, but I listened to their book as an audiobook and I really enjoyed it and I really want to read some of those episodes because I don't know, it's just like the way they created this world, it's just so amazing and in some ways, I absolutely love listening to podcasts, but in other ways, I just want to have it as a hard copy, <laughs> if it makes any sense. So, and I think those um, covers are really beautiful. Um, kind of weird, but also beautiful. So, yeah, I cannot wait to um, read them. I'm not sure I will be actually reading them, like, from the beginning to the very end, just because these are just collections of episodes. Uh, but at the same time, I can totally see myself reading through my favorite episodes. So yeah, hopefully I will get to this soon. But right now, I'm just so happy to have this two signed. I... Yes! Before going on vacation, I ordered quite a few plays because I wanted to read them before actually seeing them on stage or after seeing them on stage. And finally, I got all of them, which really excited me a lot because some of them took a while to arrive. The first one that I have here is Gaslight by Patrick Hamilton, and this is a Samuel French acting edition. I watched this play on stage at Mervish Theatre um, last December. Absolutely loved it. I think it's an amazing gothic Victorian thriller. Um, it was very well done as a chamber play. I really, really enjoyed the production. And I also wanted to read the play itself. So this one is an acting edition. And uh, I really expected it to be something different in terms of the font. Because I don't know if you can see it, but it's super small. And even though I'm short-sighted, I still feel as if I might struggle with it. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm looking forward to reading it and revisiting the play. Then I got Carolinas by Shakespeare, and this is the edition by National Theatre. 
uh, which has Tom Hiddleston on the cover. I watched this production by End to Life, I think, two times. And I might be seeing it again this winter as well because it was very good. I already own a copy of Cover Alanis by Shakespeare, but it's a, just a generic copy and I wanted to get my hands on, on this specific copy because this is the one from End to Life production. I want to see if there are any differences. And I mean, Tom Hiddleston on the cover, seriously, just how can you say no? Another play that I've seen already is Skylight by David Hare. I mentioned it more than once. I saw it as anti live broadcast two years ago. Then I saw it on stage by a local theater in June. And I wanted to make a full video review of this play and compare it to versions. But before doing that, I decided to purchase the play itself to actually see if there is some... Um, anything in it. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a specific addition for End to Life because it does have both um, um, both actors who were in that play on the cover, obviously Bill Nye. He was amazing. and um, But I want to read it and hopefully once I read it I will be able to uh, do a full review. I know it's long overdue and I have not filmed that many theater reviews as I would have hoped to do this year, but hopefully, hopefully I'll do it very time, like sometime soon because it was a very good play and um, even though it is not something that I enjoy reading or, you know, seeing on stage multiple times just because this is a, a basic drama, romantic story, uh, at the same time, the way it was written and the way it was acted was so powerful in some ways that I wanted to revisit it again. Looking forward to it. David here is amazing, by the way. He's an amazing playwright. I love him. And then I have the most colorful copy of a play that I own, and that is Richard III by William Shakespeare. And this is an edition by Jamie Lloyd. This is the exact production, the exact script of the production by Jamie Lloyd Productions. I think it's supposed to be screened by Ain't Life as well. Um, and it has Martin Freeman in it, and I'm super excited by, by this fact. I cannot wait to see Martin on stage um, in an actual play because I've seen him only in TV shows so far. As you know, I love Shakespeare and I love reading plays, so I hope I'll get to read this one before actually seeing the play, but who knows. <laughs> and the last play that I have, but definitely not least, is Treasure Island, and it is based on a book, Treasure Island by Stevenson, but it's a very original production by End to Life, and this is the script of the exact production. I've seen this production about two years ago. It was quite interesting in, the, in that sense that the main protagonist, Jim, is actually a girl, so there is a bit of a uh, gender bender in it, which was brilliant, and it was really, really funny. Unfortunately, I got to see it only once, and they didn't do any reruns of it, so I'm a bit sad about it. I would love to see it again. However, I decided to purchase the copy of this uh, play because, first of all, this is not my favorite book. I, for whatever reason, I did not like uh, Treasure Island as a kid. I love pir pirates and I love adventures, but I just didn't like this book ever. I don't know why, but when I watched it on stage and um, it was so funny and the the stage itself was so cool that I decided to purchase the script just to see what it has in terms of acting directions and just other stuff. So I'm excited to have it. I don't think I will get to it anytime soon. However, I hope I will get to it early next year. As you know, I was on vacation in Europe for three weeks, and what surprises me the most is that I came back with only one book. Um, usually it does not really happen. I usually, whenever I go somewhere, um, even if it's the country that I don't really speak the language of, I still manage to find a bookstore and purchase something there, usually in English. But this time I was in Germany, and uh, while being there, I went into uh, one of the paper stores. It wasn't really a bookstore, it was more like a paper stationery store, and I saw an absolutely amazing graphic novel that I just had to get. I know that my German is not that good as it was, if it ever was any good, but I just needed to get it, and you probably know why. This is the book which is called Der Fuchs und die Verlorenen Buchstaben, and 
I apologize for my German, but it means the fox and the lost letters. So this an amazing graphic novel. I just like flipped through it and it's so beautiful and whimsical and it's so fantastical and it has this little fox that goes on adventures. And I know it's it's a graphic novel. It's not even a graphic novel. It's like a picture book. But I just had to get it. it. It's so beautiful. Look at this art. Like every single page is so amazing that I don't even care if I read the text or not. But probably since it's like a kid's book, I'll manage it. But I just, just look at this. It's so beautiful. I just had to get it. And it has the most amazing fox on it. So yeah. I just 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 had to get it and I was so nervous that this book gets damaged in my suitcase but thankfully it did not so yeah I'm so happy I'm such a kid sometimes honestly I am another thing that I got in Germany um, is this collection of stickers which has pirates on them and I have no excuses because I purchased this thing in a, like a kid's store and but but stickers with pirates and like just just look at those I just I haven't even opened this thing yet but uh, yeah it says ages four to eight that's basically me another thing that I got in Germany and that's one of those things that I have very little self-control when it comes to and that are stationary especially journals and this is a very I haven't even like taken off plastic cover yet and this is um, Milky Way um, smooth bonded leather, screen print, whatever, sketch on dots. Like, it is a journal and um, it's just dots on paper. It's it's a dot green. It's it's not lined or anything like this. I usually don't buy dots, um, dotted paper just because I have nothing to do to use it for. It's a bit difficult to use for writing and I'm not much of a, an artist myself. However, I, I saw this one. I, I just got so much in love with it that I needed to get it. And, oh, gosh, I, I just, yes. Just, let me just take this on off and show you how it looks like inside. So, oh my god, just look at this. It's so beautiful. And this is how it looks inside. It just dotted paper. I hope you can see. And it's really heavy, but the pages are so, like everything is so beautiful and so smooth and nice to the touch. Like not exactly smooth, but it's like almost like velvety to the touch. Oh my God, I just love it. So yeah, it was super ex expensive though. Like super expensive, but I love it. Another thing which kind of falls into books slash stationery category, and this is a um, coloring book, and this one is A Million Bears by Lulu Mayo. I purchased A Million Cats uh, for my friend, and she loved it, so I decided to purchase Million Bears for myself because, I mean, it's not only bears here, but it's just super adorable. It's it's just super adorable. Plus, foxes. Yeah, I mean, I just had to get it. Um, I don't know, I have quite a few coloring books. Not sure when I will get to this one, but it's just cuteness overload. Well, this is it, guys. This is the end of my September book haul. I hope you enjoyed it, and please let me know in the comments down below if you read any of the books that I mentioned, or if you're also a fan of Welcome to Night Vale podcast, or if you have also made a pledge to purchase every single book with a fox on the cover, regardless of the language it's printed in. I want to be a friend. Bye! Uh, so these two are actually signed first editions, and this is why... Oops! <laughs> Oh, I don't think I can. Oh my god. Ouch.